Welcome to another episode of the Modern Lending Podcast Live. Today is the fourth episode in my little four ser- mini series on personal brand, developing brand, all that fun stuff. Um, it's been an incredible. We had Josh Pitts, uh, Chelsea uh, Pites, we had Rock, Raquel Boras, and now we're going to have Steve Sims. Um, I'm excited today. There's a lot of stuff to cut through, there's a lot of garbage about branding out there. So let's bring it home with Steve Sims. With the real world. Let's go, my friend. <laughs> How are you? Oh, my God. I'm so stoked to be talking with you today. Um, you know, I queued it up in the intro. Um, branding is, it was like the buzzword of 2020 next to COVID was personal branding. And it was on everything. And I, I've been working really hard to bring some value to, to my audience about what it really means, perspectives. Um, and, and, and there's so many gurus out there on brand, Steve. And y- you are somebody who I massively respect. You know, last time we did this, I gave your book away to a bunch of people. Um, but I feel like you live out loud, dude. I feel like you live your authenticity, which I know you don't like that word, but I just, I love what you bring to the conversations that we're having in our industry. And I felt there's no better person to talk to than you about personal brand and branding. Just to just go raw, just get it all out there on what we think this all means, get your perspective. Because you're coaching a lot. You're, you're leading a lot about this too. You're, 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 your perspective is awesome. So if you guys are joining us right now, get a, drop a comment, be part of the conversation. But Steve, let's kick it off. What do you think about this whole personal brand movement that we see all over the world right now? Um, all right. So I'm trying to think how I can put it politely, and I probably can't. Um, <laughs> start, let's just go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much 98% bollocks. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the absolute truth. There are All right, so let's break it down. Let's break it down to what branding is. Okay, and then you'll understand why there's a lot of people out there send, selling twelve ninety nine dollar courses that are that are hyper shit. Um, <laughs> branding is what people say about you when you've left the room. Yep, that's it. There's no other way about it. It's when someone says Aston Martin and someone goes, "Oh, blah blah." If someone says Nike, someone continues the conversation. You can start the conversation. And we'll go into that in a second. But branding is all about what somebody else says about you. How many times have you met someone and someone's come up to you and go, oh, yeah, no, I believe you do loans for under 150 grand. And you're like, "Uh, no, I don't. But if the planet's saying that's what you do, then guess what your brand is? Okay. (laughs) So there's a lot of people out there talking about, personal brands, corporate brands, how to brand yourself, but understand your focus is on the ears of the recipient and what their mouths are going to say. That's how to control the narrative. That's how to control your brand by understanding the channels is going to be distributed in first. So, but here's, here's like, I, I love, I love that definition and I love the startup, but let's just go real realistically. There are thousands of great originators, great salespeople who, when they leave a room, nobody says anything about them. Mm-hmm. They, there's, there's nothing to say. They don't, they don't remember their name. Yeah. Oh, so it's, okay. So this is, I'll, I'll play a little game with you and you can, you could do this. Um, in fact, if you've got any workforces around you and I'm kind of giving you the, the game and then giving you the conclusion. So you're probably going to have to do it to those three more ones that aren't smart enough to watch this show. But, you know, if you get, if you get two people and I've done this at events. I've done these at my events. Get two people to introduce themselves. And first thing they do is they write down on a piece a piece of paper who they are and what they do. Great. Okay. They write it down. Give them two minutes to do that. Okay. okay. And then what you do is you make them stand up. And you can do this as a corporate exercise. Face each other. And then for two minutes, tell the person who you are, what you do. Okay. And then when the bell goes, the other person goes. Two minutes, who you are, what they do. Okay. And then you have them sit down. And then you do something else with your morning meeting, you know, just housekeeping, you know, yeah. going over reviews, some stuff, yeah. anything to change the mindset. Yep. And then you say, okay, who wants to introduce themselves? And you get a few people put their hands up and you're okay, okay. 
Who did you speak to? And I go, well, I spoke to Alex. Okay, Alex, stand up and introduce Mary. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, you've never seen such a dynamic train wreck in your life. Now, understand this. We don't have two minutes of undivided attention to introduce ourselves in any environment, oh. uh, digitally or even in a loud event. We don't have that concentrated energy uh, of being forced to listen to someone for two minutes and what they do. For a start, people flap. You know, two minutes is a long time. Yeah. Okay? They're it really is. Out, just staring off into the corner. Yeah, you are. But for two minutes, I've got your undivided attention telling you. So when the other person introduces you as a, a shoe shine specialist or <laughs> completely, you're like, how did you get that wrong? Understand that you're not making what you do and this is the key for anyone out there writing these down, you're not making what you do impossible to misunderstand. You're cluttering it with too many fairy lights. So you're right. People, people will go into the room, and I had a conversation with one of my coaching clients who is very, very talented, but a complete cluster beep because he goes, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do No one can hang on to your 30 unicorn talent skills. They want to focus on Hey, what does Alec do? Alec saves me all the pain by getting me into the home I need to be with the best rate possible. You know, you've got to control the narrative by actually limiting the intro. You've got to limit what you say. I, I want to go deeper on this because a lot of people are waking up and realizing there's an opportunity like never before on social media. They're realizing there's an opportunity that has never existed in their life in our space to get out in front of humans. They're starting to put content out. They're starting to put videos out and it's not landing. Like people are watching it and they're like, well, I, they just do a lot of videos. I just scroll past. Like they're not hearing. They, they, if you ask them to give a two minute script on, you know, what is Alec doing on the internet? They're going to be like, I don't, he does a lot of video. <laughs> I don't know. So what do you mean by you got to hit them right away? What do you mean by you got to make simplify your message? All right, so am I any different on Facebook that I am on LinkedIn, that I am on Instagram, that I am on Tinder, or any of those? Am I the same person on all of those? <laughs> on Tinder? I hope not. <laughs> but the, here's, the, here's the daft thing. <clears throat> so here's your first exercise. Nine times out of ten, you're confusing your clients, okay? And the real estate and mortgage industry is the absolute worst for this next example. Okay, you're right about social being a great opportunity, but it's also a minefield. And what people do is they join as many social platforms as they can, yep. which you should. Okay, join the uh, join the social platforms, but your bio and picture should be the exact same. Now you can change the picture as long as it's current, you know. Mm -hmm. But you look at LinkedIn and you're there with a shirt and tie. And you go over to Facebook and you've got a bikini on and a Mai Tai stretching out on the beach, which is or very bad. A blurry picture that you can't tell it's you. Yeah. I mean, it's or, terrible. Or the worst thing, as I said about this industry, you've picked a picture from when you did a photo shoot from 1985 <laughs> when you didn't know whether you were going into real estate or soft porn. There's all this haze behind you and it's, oh, what the fuck's all that about? You know? So you've got to be the same person. For the first thing is no one does business with anybody that confused about. Okay. And you made it loud and clear. You gave the answer to this question away earlier that I'm shouting out there and you, you used the word authenticity. You know, I hate it. I, I am completely transparent. People will bump into me in a bar. It's been known to happen. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. They could meet me in a park they could meet me on stage. They could meet me at one of your brilliant conventions. Mm. And I'm going to be the exact same person in every single one. Then why are you so super smart that you've decided to be a different person on LinkedIn than you are on Facebook? That's the first thing. Let me go, let me go a little bit deeper on this because I love where you're going. Let's talk about the, the fake it till you make it. Let's talk about the people that believe they have to put a face on. They have to have a persona. They have to show themselves as uber successful. Like there's a there's an undercurrent here, and, and especially in social media, because there's a lot of bullshit with people like posing by Lamborghinis that they don't own. You know where you look at their, but they're but they're feeling like if I don't show up like this, 
I'm not putting the air out that's going to attract who I want. How do you how do you deal? How do you address that? Going deeper on this topic. So I'm actually, and it's not done yet, so you can't sign up for it. So this isn't a pitch, but I'm actually doing an influencer course, okay, Ooh. on how to build credibility. And my opening line is. Why are people buying courses on influence and credibility from people that have neither? And that's, that's the thing. They're, they're leaning up against these cars going, I have, a, you know, you should make a million dollars. I did before I finished off the toilet. It's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. But here's, here's the thing. I'll give you a little, uh, I'll give you a little um, uh, example, which will demonstrate how you need to show up, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, we're peed off. Okay, today we're aggravated. Yeah, we've gone through a pandemic. We've yeah. gone through politics. We've gone through riots. We've yep. gone through conspiracy theories. For, for we've, we've had it up to here. Yeah, you know we're we're done. The second you step up to me and you want to sell me something, I'm already done with you. Okay. But if you're knocking on my door at one o'clock in the morning and you're like, Steve, 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 I, I know I'm waking you up, but you know, I've just found out there's a new rate out there that is half a percent and that you can get it. Am I going to welcome you into the house? I the answer is yes. You know, see, the bottom line of it is when you wake up in the morning at two o'clock in the morning because you've got a throbbing headache and you go to the bathroom and you open up the cabinet and you grab out those Advil, aspirin, whatever it is, those headache tablets. Do you have any care? Do you stop and go, well, I don't like the logo. I don't like the packaging. I wish the packaging was pretty. You know, why don't they make it in the shape of a pill? No one cares. Why? Because it's a solution. And in today's market, that's why I'm so, uh, um, as I am, I'm not there to look pretty. Can't help being gorgeous, but I'm not trying to be that person, I'm there to be a solution. Hey, I'm going to do this, 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 okay? I'm not going to make you slimmer. I'm not going to talk to you about hair products. I'm not going to make you a fashion icon, but I am going to do this. I provide a solution. Today's market of the fake it till you make it, don't. Just go, hey, have you got a problem with this? I'm your solution. You don't need a resume to be the solution. Dude, I love, I absolutely Love that comment. I, I, I totally agree. You know, th this fake success and trying to show off this, just focus on the solution you provide yep. and be grounded there. And, and you'll get to the point of your brand real quick to people that are bumping into it. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, and again, you know, this, if I said to you, what does aspirin do? You're going to tell me, you know, because there's a message. You're going to be the branding marketing agent for aspirin. You know, if, if, like, you're not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you what the chemicals do. I don't know what the chemicals do. All I know is that the headache goes away. So, <laughs> well, you're going to, and you just, well done for adding that bit, because the only thing you can say is the solution that it provides. And if it resonates to the problem that I have, you're now a credible source. So I'm going to go, well, okay, funny enough, funny you mentioned it. I get headaches. And he was just talking about this, this brand. I'm going to get that brand because you're a credible source and you're making it impossible to misunderstand what they do. Okay. So you've laid out like the foundation, right? Be, be unmistakably clear about what you do. Be grounded in your solution that you provide. Don't worry about the BS and the fake Lambos and all that stuff. Orient this way. So, so let's say somebody hears that, writes it down and goes, okay, um, get on social platforms, you said, right? Get out. Get, so what do they do? What, what should they do? Start filming. Right. Let's break it down. For a start, um, and we can use real estate metaphors for you here, right. okay? I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's just, and a friend of mine, Dan Fleischman, told me this. There's just under 400 social platforms active every month. Oof. Just under 400. We can only name five, maybe yeah. six. Yeah, And every week, another one uh, explodes. I got one this morning, which, and it always makes you laugh, is only open to influencers and celebrities. Oh, thank have God. You, <laughs> have you always, have, you've noticed I've always only open to those people. But anyway, the point is, anytime a social platform opens up, 
The first thing you should do before you have your coffee is register your username. There's the same on every single one. I'm on Steve D. Sims anywhere you look. Yep. Okay. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. Yep. Anywhere you look, I'm there. Also understand at its core, what is a social platform? It's a point of consumption. If I say to you tonight, all of these people listening, hey, six o'clock tonight, watch the news. Let's chat about it in the morning. Yes. And we talk about, I don't know, politics, interest rates, you know, uh, vaccines, COVID. We'll have the same information. But then if I said to you, what news station did you watch? It'll be CNN, NBC, KTLA, ABC, BBC. The point is, same news, different platform of consumption. Mm. Okay? So the first thing you've got to do is grab your username on every single point of consumption you absolutely can. Because, yes, you, you can get registered on there later. You know, you can get on Clubhouse later when, it's, yeah, when, it's, yeah. when I want to be. But you may not be able to get your name. So what if your name ends up being someone that did something illegal yeah. or becomes um, a rock star or an actor? And you suddenly start getting confused yep. and get lost in all that. So basically the social names are beach front real estate, and there's not a lot of that stuff out there. So the first thing to do is okay. every parlor, me, we. I haven't been on them, yeah, but I'm registered on every single. I'm still on MySpace for Christ's sake, you know. So grab every single page you can, go back to it when you need to. So that's the first thing. Grab your real estate. Second thing, anything you post, you've got to ask yourself one question. The recipient watching this, are they going to say, okay, or so what? Ooh, yes. And let me, let me explain. Yeah. When I go on stage, and for any of you people that have been misfortunate enough to actually see me on stage, <laughs> I go on and I straight away talk to you. Yes. And I answer questions. And I'm very uh, conversational with the crowd. And I'll jump into the crowd. I'll pull people up. And I'm always on Q&A. Why? Because if I walk on stage and go, hey, I've worked with Sir Elton John and Elon Musk, I'm a big deal, and then shut up, I'm going to get booed, okay? But if I go on stage and go, hey, I've worked with millionaires and billionaires around the world, and over the next hour, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do the same. Yes. It's the same message, but now I've twisted it to benefit you. So when someone looks at whatever you do, video, copy, email, text, whatever, you've got to go... Are they looking at this and going, well, so what? You're brilliant. The, the, the classic one is I sold $5 trillion of real estate in one month. Well, whoopie do. Come to my course for $99. Yeah. Well, yep. the worst one is they don't even say that. They just, they just love to go on there and gloat. And here's the other one that's good, and people need to be aware of this. People go up there and go, hey, I just won the award for the top salesman. Both of those reactions are like, so what? It's so good, true. Yeah, good, good. We've all seen it. But so true. If you won that trophy, how about if you were to turn around and go, hey, I just won salesman of the year. I couldn't have done it without being dedicated to my trade and focusing on you getting where you need to be. Yeah, we're now it's a case of okay, I want to work with this person. Yeah, or just thank some people. Like, like I want an award, but I want to, I like, I could have done it without this person. This person helped me. These realtor partners, my cut, these yeah. customers, like take the, like, it's the same thing that I get. A, I get like a, like a, or like a gag reflex when people are posting their Yelp reviews. I'm like F off. Like, I don't care. First of all, I expect you to be a five-star amazing person. So you didn't do anything special. And then you're just, you're just like, I can't imagine you go at a networking party. Like how terrible must you be to talk to? Cause if you're just going to tell me about your five-star reviews, yeah, I can't. I can't handle it. Okay, yeah, so you've got to, you've got to, you've got to basically make sure that everything you put out there, and that's that's what I try to do. Everything I put out there, I try to initiate a conversation, a trigger, a reaction, and I try to make it about you. So that's what you, every time you're talking about anything, every time you're promoting about you, every time you're talking about the new rates, any time that you're doing anything to demonstrate how brilliant you are. The last few seconds should turn around and go, and hey, if you want to see how I can help you with this, reach out. 
Okay. So, I mean, I feel like we've almost nailed the whole thing. So I want to go through it again because th there's so many core parts here. Be grounded in your solution, not yourself. Be grounded in others. Be helpful. Hit them right away. Don't waste time. Explain your solution and why it benefits them. Grab your real estate. Get your, get your name on all the platforms in case you want to play deep, you know, deeper on them. Recognize that there's a ton of human behavior happening on them, like news channels and, and be, be in there. Um, what am I missing? What did I miss? No, you're absolutely right. But to the, the one in there that I would probably bold and underline and, and lean and do all my fonty work with would be the solution. You see, getting a mortgage and getting a house is, is my problem. And you've got to understand that no one wants to apply for a mortgage. No one wants to try and buy a house because they know that they're going into a viper's den of, you know, you ask me for everything from my inside leg, leg measurement and it's you a, get to be the one that commands whether or not I get it's a whole it, the myth is it's a horrible experience. So you are the solution. Once you become the solution, I actually don't care that you're turning up in a in a new Mercedes. You could turn up on a freaking moped. As long as you're giving me what I need, I love you. Now bearing in mind, when you are solution based, and this is something that people oversee. A lot of people look at the client in front of them as that client, that transaction. Yeah. Okay. The person that they're talking to is a source. Now, this is where your mind shift, you know, it's the matrix blue pill, red pill thing. This is where it goes, oh, hang on a minute. When I'm talking with you and I'm solving your problems, now you can become a source for my marketing referrals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, bearing in mind, a lot of people knew I had my concierge firm. A lot of people know I have my coaching. But you know, I do no promoting on either of those. All of my business comes from people that go, hey, I hear you look after Alec. I hear you look after John. I hear you look after Bill. You know, I want a piece of that. Well, let's have a chat. Mm. The second you're providing a solution to someone, then again, they become your front line of marketing, which is branding. Yes. And then those people come to you. And that's what you need. But that's, see, that you just completed the whole circle, right? Yes. Because your brand is what people talk about you when you leave. Yep. You realize all the impact you're making, providing solutions, becomes what people talk about when you leave. And it's not your stupid logo or your hashtag, you know, or your clever tagline. It, it becomes something much deeper and richer. So I had, um, I had this firm, Bluefish, the, the concierge thing. And, yeah. um, you know, I, st I stopped working on that a couple of years ago, so I'm not pitching that. I, did, I was in that for about eight years. Yeah. And I was arrogantly probably the most connected person in the planet that nobody knew. Um, I, only, <laughs> I, I only worked with billionaires and people that own things like countries. Um, and there was a big <laughs> event that I did in Monaco and I got picked up by a TV station in the UK to do a breakfast morning uh, interview, okay? Yep. And we had one of these newfangled things called a website. Ooh. And we launched it in like 1999. Bear in mind, we started in 94. So we had this website. And in about 2001, I was invited onto this British TV show. And I was already living in Palm Beach. Um, so, you know, I was doing okay, had clients traveling around the planet. But I was in London, so I went on this TV show. And then as the TV show was going through, the woman that was uh, interviewing me, she turned around and she said, and you're so uber secretive and selective on your client. And it was a beautiful puff piece. It was making me look absolutely fantastic. And she said, you're so uber secretive, you don't even have a phone number or an email on your website, do you? Oh, and, you know, we had suddenly realized at that moment we had forgot to put a contact page <laughs> on our website. Now, the funny thing was, and, of course, like, you know, I was quick off the mark. I was like, that's right. We only work with people yeah. that have introduced yeah. us. I came, off of that I came off of that set, chewed out my PA going, where the hell? I've just done national TV and we don't even have a contact page. And do you oh. know what impact it had on my business? Hmm. not having the contact page, zero. Because huh. we got people come to me going, hey, I heard from Alec that you could pull to us. I heard from Bill that you can do this. And so you've got to understand, where do you want your marketing to be? If you do like throwing money at Facebook ads and joining the noise and distortion of everyone else doing it, 
hey, knock yourself out. I've probably got a four ninety nine course for you. But if you really want to get people to do business with you, then focus on the person you're doing business with at that time is now going to be your front line of branding and marketing. But so I, I want to go deeper on that topic because there is, you mentioned the noise and the noise is astronomical, you know, from Super Bowl ads to, to you watch a YouTube video and you get hit in the face with a video. You know, you want, you go to Facebook and there's a million ads. You got, you got clickbait, you got ads following you with retargeting. You know, we're, we're over, we're, we're killed. We're, we're toast on this stuff. And so yeah. how, how, you know, and they're, and they're building brand, right? Cause I, I asked someone to, you know, tell me your first insurance company that comes to your head and people are like, well, Geico or State Farm, because they've got that brand recognition instantly in their, in their head. So how do you compete against that as, you know, a single person? All right. Okay. Well, first of all, they don't have a lead in brand that louder. Okay. There was actually, there was actually a beautiful book that came out uh, called The Iconist. And yeah. it talks about um, Madonna is an icon of pop music. Yeah. But she's not the best singer or musician out there. Okay. But she's an icon of that period. You know, Andy Warhol was an icon, was, a, was an artistic icon. Yep. But he did something and then screen printed it in different colors 50 million times, yet he's an icon. So you haven't got to be the best. You've got to be the best known. And that's what those people are actually shouting for. The Geico adverts and, you know, having flow uh, for progressive and all yeah. of those things. And if you've noticed, State Farm is now starting to identify a single character uh -huh. in their adverts. Because the first thing we need to understand is we want to put a face behind a brand. We don't like companies. We like people. You watch Amazon. And you know what Jeff Bezos is doing. You watch Tesla and you know what Elon Musk is doing. And the originator of this is Virgin. You yep. fly on Virgin because you want to be cool like Richard Branson. Yeah, of course. Dude, he's the uh, man. Yeah. He's the man. Bingo. So the first thing you've got to I, I, I understand is you are the face of whatever, whatever company. Alec, for argument's sake, is the face of this brand, of this company. You can align yourself. He's the flow of this group. All right, so you've got to understand that you have the responsibility to be the face, and you you're not going to be able to compete with Super Bowl ads. You're not going to be able to get a celebrity to walk into the background and suddenly give you a big uh, a credibility boost or a big name or oh, did you see him hanging out with sir? What you've got to do is lead with a solution. Now there are two kinds of marketing in the planet, which will explain this a bit better: aspirational, solution based. Okay. Now, if it's aspirational, rings, watches, jewelry, clothing, cars, there's a reason that all of those places are in fancy neighborhoods. And yep. you go into Cartier, and it goes in a red box. That red box goes in a red cardboard box. That cardboard box goes into a bag. That bag has a few little kind of petals put in it. There's a lot surrounding it to build up the value and the anticipation. Yep. Okay? But again, back to the headache tablets. You solve my problem. None of that matters. So let, let's talk about frequency. You, yep. you said something that I think people hear it is that they're being louder than you. Yep. Uh, and so, so now, you know, I could see somebody taking on the mindset of, well, crap, how do I be loud? How can I become loud? Do I have to, you know, how, how often should I be posting? You know, what do I do? Good questions. What Good do questions. That? So for a start, understand that Progressive Insurance, State Farm, uh, any of these insurance companies are selling insurance, okay? How many of the adverts do you know talk about the insurance over giving you a little comedy skit? Mm -hmm. Okay? Every single one of them makes you smile. You yeah. don't go to Progressive because you know they're 25% less. You, you mean, don't go to State – you have no idea of the product – but they all do these comedy adverts that make you go, oh, that's funny, because it creates a trigger, okay? Because quite simply, what they are selling, you don't want to hear about. Can you imagine an advert that came on tomorrow and there's a guy, there's me or you stood there and going, well, actually, uh, on these TVs and on these houses, we can be at $495 and these companies are actually at $500. So we're, you're bored. You've turned off. 
yeah, even he, though they could have saved you money. So you got to look at creating a trigger. And people always say, how do I constantly put out uh, content and not annoy people? Yes. All right. I'm, Which is part of that. Okay. So here's a few ways of doing it. Stop when there's no one that has the problem anymore. Okay. okay. That's the bottom line. If you woke me up at two o'clock this morning and went, there's a new fund out there and I can get you a mortgage at 1% and you just woke me up, you know, I'm going to still invite you in. Thank you very much and sign up on your deal. Now, if I go to bed and me and the wife are getting a bit fresh and you knock on the door again and I look out of it, it's bloody Alec again. I open up the door and he goes, there's a new one out and it's actually a quarter of a percent. I'm going to welcome you back in again. See, the bottom line of it is, as long as what you send helps the recipient, then post 24 times a day. I love it. I love it. I, I love it. It, it. You know, well, so now what we're really talking about, Steve, is, is the fear. Because it's the fear of, of doing it, of rejection, of posting, of being made fun of. Of you know, because I guarantee you, people are are going down this progression on this conversation today. Whether they've heard it from different sources and they're and they're walking down the progression, they're realizing the truths. They're they're landing on your concepts of solution oriented. You know, need to get out there, and then they and then they go, you got to post twenty four seven all the time, and then they start. They immediately go, Wait, I, I'm out, I'm out. You know, uh, and 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 all the old baggage comes up. And I I, I know we're hitting the thirty minute mark, but I want to talk a little bit about fear that people have that stops them from doing executing on this? Well, I said post 24 times a day, as long as it was content that could help the person listening. You know, yeah. if it's 24 times a day, just because you want to show off your new car and pair of shoes, then that's, you know, that's bull. Track. You yeah, know, you're... that's that's rubbish. So like for argument's sake, I'll go through a couple of, of, of days and maybe I'll post, Two or three times, I've got an event next week, so you'll probably see me posting five times because I've got different people coming to my event. Yep. Um, but then the following week, you may see me post three times in the entire week. So you only post when you've got something to say that's going to help someone else. That's, that's the first thing. Now, um, I'm going to help all of the smart people out there. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm only speaking to the daft ones, okay? For all of you that are scared about doing videos and sending out purposeful solutions via your text or your video, then pour yourself a copy, coffee, write your resume, and apply to pack bags at Amazon. Because everyone else in here realizes that that's what's working, and they're probably doing it now while you're peeing yourself. So you, it, it's not a case. We're not sitting here going – well, should we look at doing this? No. It's being done. It's, it's, it's the trains left the station. Yeah, I know it's for, I know it's for argument's sake, uh, and I'm going to bring attention to it. You've got a text me button down there. In yeah. fact, if you've got a question, you should text 949-356-7250 to Alec. That was that for an advert for you. Perfect. <laughs> but the bottom line of it is, Alec's using different platforms here to solve your problem. And he's establishing credibility by the brilliant people that he's speaking to. You should be looking at this as a masterclass of what he's doing. He's spending 30 minutes talking to people that know about stuff, impressing you on his ability, and then giving you an opportunity for him to solve your problems without actually saying it, which is the beautiful genius here. So you've got to do the same. Make sure you're talking to your crowd. Use text, use email, use social, use every consumptionable platform out there to get you as the opportunity to solve someone's problem. And if you don't, then get out of the industry because the smart people are already doing it. You know, Steve, I, I'll tell this story because it's, it's, it's what you just said in another, in another language. Um, you know, uh, in, in 2003, when I started in the business, my mentor said, Alec, every single day, you need to leave the office and you need to go out and meet realtors at their offices, at their open houses, at their broker previews. You need to introduce yourself, bring flyers, bring cookies, bring waters, and you need to build relationships with them because they're going to give you referrals and they're going to change your life. 
And again, this is a Nokia flip phone with snake on it. There's no, I, I, you know, I, there's no internet like that we have today. And so I watched loan officers that would be like, I hate realtors. I don't respect them. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go after financial planners and divorce attorneys. And, and I'm like, good luck. Because you'll never be as successful because the river of, of opportunity is running by that group. Like that's where the opportunity is. You, you can try to pretend like you don't want to go down there, but that's, I'm sorry, that's where the world is. And I asked my dad if I'm like, I have a college degree. Do I really have to go like demean my, you know, serve these realtors? And he's like, son, you're going to serve somebody. So just choose, you know, get the knee pads out because you're going to serve somebody. And I was like, oh, yep. And so you fast forward to today, Steve, and what you just said is radically true. I mean, you, you, you hit, hit people right in the face with it, which I love about you because you just bring it. If you don't recognize what Steve just said, that this new medium is where the action is, it's where the humans are, it's where the opportunity lies, and you're going to hide behind a fear, an excuse, um, a, a, an, a bias that this, is, that this is not for you, then you're not going to win in the, bit, in the game. Because the next gen of talent and the current gen that gets it is going deep in the space. They're building brand where, they're, where the digital community says, oh, I know exactly what Steve does. I know exactly who Steve is because I see him all the time. I engage with his content all the time. I'm, I, I know, you know, if, if, you don't, if you don't understand, you know, Steve just told you the truth, you're not going to make it here. And thank you, by the way, for just, just having the um, audacity to tell people the truth, which is a, a thing that the world lacks right now. And so, you know, as we kind of wind down here, Steve, what would you say, um, what else would you say to everybody that's listening to this conversation that's tuned in for, you know, they're, maybe they're watching this in the future or listening to the podcast version, which is, you know, just they're driving in their car. You know, what, what are you going to leave? What do you want to leave someone with here? Okay. Identify the triggers and the triggers and habits that are being formed today and then work off of them. Okay. Um, so we've gone through COVID where we have got used to doing far more interaction via zoom calls so people are used to seeing people that are maybe not studio quality and haven't had their hair done and haven't had that much so we're used to seeing imperfect people which just happen to be what we really are okay so you know 2018 where everyone was going i don't want to be on video my hair and i'm having a bad beard day and oh my god does this video make me look fat no you probably are fat so the <laughs> bottom line of it is zoom has shown us all of these things now where we're showing real people interacting in quite often sometimes just an uncomfortable, unscripted, yeah. real manner. So we've got used to that. Yeah. It's not going to go away. So continue it. So before you turn around and go, right, I better do my hair. Don't do your hair. Pick your phone up and just shoot a video and go, hey, if you're watching the news at the moment, you may have seen X. I'd love to chat with you about how it impacts you. Send me, uh, send me a time that we can chat and text it to someone. Yep. yep. Just, just do that. Make it quick. Make it real. Yep. And make it current. You know, I, I want to echo your comment. For everyone that has that fear of like, I don't like how I look or sound on video. It's that's such an ego play. They don't care what you look like and sound like. They care what they look like and sound like. It, it, there's a little bit of like, get over yourself. You're not that important. They don't care. So, you know, I have, I have a squeaky voice unless I get intentional. I like talk like, you know, like, like a man. And I don't care. Like, you just, no one cares. No. They're, they're all focused on themselves. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for dropping that at the end. Last, last comment, Steve. Anything else, brother? No, just uh, um, I, I, I was very fortunate that uh, Jay Abraham's a, a friend and a neighbor of mine. And he once said to me, he said, I've got a greater eye can than an IQ. And so stop overthinking this shit and just try it. And here's the thing. Try anything 10 times. Try texting your clients, different clients, 10 times. Try doing videos 10 times. Try changing a, a video comment 10 times and see what the reaction is. And what will happen is you will start engaging a conversation. And all of that conversation and what you stand for and your comments and your likes and your squeaky voice, as Alec was saying, becomes your brand. Okay. So focus on you. Well, I'm going to end with this, Steve. So for those of you guys that enjoyed this conversation, please know that, that Steve lives this life out loud. If you find him on social media, just search for Steve Sims. Come on. Don't, I don't have to teach you, but you have great Facebook groups to be a part of. You do this amazing speakeasy that I got to get into one day where you just bring professionals around and you and entrepreneurs around and you just have these kind of raw conversations that push 
the narrative forward. And so, man, just thank you for what you contribute to our industry and to the places we're out here, guys. Thank you, everyone else who has listened today on the Model Learning Podcast, and we will see you guys on the internet.